throw this in the folder. Sweet. Okay, so let's do a check-in. Thomas, you're unmuted. Let's hear from you first. So what's your updated report for the week? Um, I've reached out to three people so far. Um, the two that you shared that you connected me with. Um, and then um, going through that list that I sent you earlier, that's what I'm working on right now, reaching out to them right now. So going through all the messages that you sent me and entering all that mess, all that information into my spreadsheet and then reaching out to them. Awesome. Was that, so that was really cool that you reached out and said, Hey, do you know anything more about these guys? Cause that makes all the difference in the world. Let's make a regular habit of that. Okay. Awesome. How was that feedback? Was it helpful? Yes. Awesome. It's going to be helpful. Sweet, sweet. And then you had shared, yeah, I got in a drift about uh, accountability and all this other stuff. And I've been, I got held up and now I'm, I'm clear and I'm recommitting and I'm, I'm rolling. I'm ready. And I'm committing. Yeah. 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 It was interesting. The past two days, just uh, hitting a wall, not, not being able to move, it seemed like. And then I realized I was fighting the accountability aspect of it. Awesome. Great awareness, brother. Good job. Proud of you. Thank you. Is there any questions that you have for me? Um, I had a call this afternoon at noon um, with one of the people. What's her name? I can't remember how to pronounce um, her name. Uh, yeah. No, not Carolyn. Um, Keisha or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she's really, really interested in the Ascension group coaching, um, but she doesn't have the money right now. So I was going to ask you, I set up another call with her after she had a plan to get the money. Um, so I set up another call with her to connect with her again after that. Is there any other steps that you would take in a situation like that? So she wants the, the video cut out a little bit. She wants Ascension and, and what? And the purge. Okay. Um, and then she, you guys talk, she says, I really want it. And then you made a game plan for her to go get the money and then arrange to talk again. When did you arrange to talk again? Um, we arranged to talk again the first of March. What I would probably do is maybe in a couple of weeks, I would reach out and say, Hey, how are you doing? Are you on course? Is there anything that I can support you with to help get that done? Uh, to, to help uh, generate that money. So it's just like you're walking beside her, you're kind of staying in her face, you're making sure that she's no, she's not alone. And, and then if, if it gets um, beyond, over your head, like, shit, I don't know how to help her solve this, then you can say, you maybe three-way message me and her and say, hey, Christopher, um, Atashiaia or whatever is is – Working on the money, this is where we've come to, this is where we're held up, and we're just reaching out to see if you have any feedback for us. Okay, perfect. And then other than that, I would drop That's it. That's all that I had right now. Perfect. And then and then after that I would just wait till the due date, reach out to her, say how same basic message, how you doing? Are you on course? Did you get it? Um, and great, let's get this handled. So just very assumptive, like, let's get this handled and just assume that it's done. If she has the money, just say, cool, I'll get you connected with Eliza. Don't go into anything else. Don't leave any doors open. Just be, like, very assumptive, like, cool, next step, let's get you connected with Eliza. Uh, we'll get this collected. If she's like, I got most of it, I don't know what to do, then you could be like, okay, let's get on the phone and figure out maybe what we need to do is work out a payment plan. Or if she... Um, says, oh, I don't have it, then you just go to back to work on, okay, well, what do we need to do to help you get it? What else? Okay. So like, and ask her questions like, what else haven't you tried? Who else haven't you contacted? What else can you do? So like you, until she tells you, no, I'm done, I give up, I quit, don't fucking ask me anymore. Just, just keep, keep finding okay what else can we try let's not give up what else can you do what else what else haven't you tried who else haven't you talked to 
Okay. What else could you do to provide value and generate money? You just keep putting it back on her and getting her to engage and take responsibility for creating what she wants. Awesome. Sweet. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, Brandon, where are we at, brother? Yeah, so this week, um, getting started, I only talked to Chrissy. So right now I'm looking for clarity of what to do moving forward to get things started out and reaching out to some of my audience. Awesome. And have we uh, connected you with any of our leads at all? Uh, just Chrissy. Okay. And uh, the, the girl from last week. Okay. Um, and uh, did you track, are you guys tracking your conversation? Uh, so there's a couple things that I realized this week. It's going to make a big difference if you guys turn in a daily report. And, and I Thomas, you turned one in last night over in Wufu. I don't know, Jonathan, did you design that? Um, I built the Wufu forms last night. That was actually a test form that I pretended like I was Thomas. To oh, make okay. Sure. <laughs> 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 was good like I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe take a look at it and see if those that's the information that you want to see. I also haven't talked to Brandon. I'm like Thomas and I spent two hours and I covered with him like how to take payment, um, like everything in his folder. I haven't done that with Brandon at all, so I probably get to show that to Brandon as well. Was that recorded and can we just share the recording with Brandon? Um, no, actually, uh, that was live. We did it in person, so I can record Brandon's. Let's do that and then save it for future generations. Awesome. And then with Brandon, do you want me to set him up on his Wufu payment payment form as well? Yep. Okay, I'll do that. So let's do a Wufu payment form. So guys, every time you make a sale, you'll fill out a form on Wufu, and it'll be specific to your name so that it automatically credits you for the sale. And it'll automatically email Eliza to get her information from the cell. And then to make sure that she processes it quickly because we don't want people backing out before we, ha we have their money where their mouth is. Just send her a quick message. If you make a cell, send her a quick message. For now, over the next few weeks, I don't want to do this long term because it'll be too much drain on my time. But over the next couple of weeks, it would be a good idea if every time you guys finish a call, you sent me a, a message saying, hey, this is what happened. This was the result. I spoke to this person. We spoke for this long. It went really well. This is what I think I went. This is what I think went great. This is what I think went not so great. This is what I think I need to do to improve. Do you have any feedback for me? If you guys will do that on every call for the next couple of weeks, we can get you dialed in way faster. <laughs> you try to stop it. <laughs> a quick question. Do you want them to do that in addition to a daily report, or do you want them to just kind of fold that into their daily report? I want it in addition to because the daily report, I know it's a lot of extra time right now, but the daily report will summarize the day, which will hold you accountable to, and it'll just help us see what's working, what's not working, what kind of numbers, because this is all a numbers game, guys. If Thomas, if I can see that you're making three calls a day and you're enrolling zero, I, need to, I, need to, I know that I need to empower you around how to make those convert. If I see that you're scheduling three calls a day and two of those you're enrolling, I'm like, fuck, dude, let's speak your calls every day and make some bank, right? So no matter what's happening, if you'll give me a daily report, then I'll immediately know what needs to be adjusted and how to best empower and support you. So it's not so that I can crucify you. It's so that I can empower you and fortify you so that you can be successful. And so we want to track the most important things that will ensure your success in the fastest, easiest way possible. My connection's pretty slow for some reason, so I'm going to turn off my video. Awesome. Um, so daily tracking, let's all brainstorm for a minute. So ideally, if we knew how much time did you spend approximately, how many hours did you spend selling today? So Christopher, I, I have this built in a Wufu form already. So, um, 
let me open that up and just tell you what I already created and then we can go from there. Does that sound good? Kind of. How about you open it so you can track, but then take notes because I'm going to pull more importantly than your, if I read your woofu, it's going to distract me and then I'll try to sort, does this cover everything? Versus if I just tune in and be like, what's the most important things to cover? And we make sure we capture all those things as I say them, then if you see they're not in there, then we can add them in. Cool. Awesome. So how much time did I spend selling today? Done. How many co uh, uh, contacts or whatever word we're going to use for that? How many, how many reach outs did Touch I make? I, I called it touches. So I said touches okay. created. Okay. So how many people did I reach out to? Um, how many people responded? So how I have, many point, what's that? How many people responded? I have appointments created. Do you want that responded different than appointments? Yeah, because if you're sending a message, if they're sending a message, if they sent out 10 messages and they got zero responses, then we need to address what message they're sending out. Okay. So it's like how many messages, how many reach outs did it, how many, how many, reaches did I take make um, how many responses did I get then the next step how many appointments did I get scheduled then how many enrollment calls did I have how many cells did I make how many enrollments did I complete It might be good to on those enrollments to list did I was it a full tuition collected up front or payment plan so that we could see a pattern if, if the salesperson's like always jump into the payment plan because they're scared to ask for the bigger amount then we give the salesperson a breakthrough so that they're scared they're not scared to go for the big amount <laughs> Um, and then I had a summary box and that was everything. Okay. That that's probably good. Now, one of the things for the, for you salespeople, you may have someone that says, yeah, I'm in, but I don't have the money right now. Um, and the way you address that is you'll say, I didn't get the sale, but they did, you know, but then in the notes, you'll say they said they're in, but they don't have the money, but you need to count that as not a sell. Even if they, if they didn't give you a credit, a source of payment, you didn't make a sell. Even if they say I'm in, um, would it be helpful for you guys, for me to explain? I think it might be for me to explain the importance of these tracking pieces and why we would do it and the benefit for you. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to do it real quick. So, Jonathan, tell me step by step what I just said. Time spent on sales. Okay, the importance of this is if you, if you didn't know that you were having to report on that, then your mind's going to talk into, ah, I just, I'll just go play some video games. Oh, I'll just whatever. So, it's in your best interest to know, shit, I'm going to have to tell them how much time I spent on sales, and I'm either going to have to lie and say I did more and then feel shitty because I'm a liar. <laughs> or I'm going to have to report a lower number and feel like I'm a, a lazy bastard. Or I'm going to, you know, great, a great balance of doing what needs to be done while taking care of myself and being accountable to that so that I show up consistently and set up the systems that allow me to show up consistently in power by getting up and working out and eating healthy and taking breaks and meditating and journaling and expressing and moving through my shit and shifting and whatever and feeding myself properly and getting plenty of water and prepacking my food beforehand so that I can have it right there when I need it and whatever so that I can kick ass and, and perform at optimal performance instead of just showing up and to play football and wonder, you know, not bringing any Gatorade or water and then wondering why you're thirsting to death, right? Like show up like a fucking champion.
show up to win and think, what all can I do to set myself up to win? And I'm doing this accountability so that I don't play head games with myself and talk myself into being a lazy bastard who puts in a half-assed amount of time and then wonders why I get a half-assed paycheck. This is a numbers game. There's going to be a certain amount of failed attempts before you reach mastery. The faster you get through those failed attempts, the faster you start making a shit ton of money. If you show up two hours a day and this takes you six months to make any money, then you're pissed off. I've been working for six months. I'm still broke. I'm like, no, you haven't been working for six months. You've been working for two hours a day for six months. That's fucking a month and a half, right? <laughs> But yeah. the, pressure, the pressure is going to mount the longer we go on, right? So, so put your time in. Pay the piper. Put your time in. And that'll, it'll just make it easier for you to get in and get that done because you know that, hey, I'm going to have to account. Yeah, I was a pussy today. <laughs> so it's, it's in your best interest. All right. Touch is created. Touch is created. So touch is created. The reason why this is important is like if you spend eight hours and then you're like, and I only reached out to three people, we're like, okay, eight hours reached out to three people. All right. Like, uh, are you being efficient or are you mentally masturbating? Are you thinking too much? Are you getting distracted? Are you reading through your list 18 times to figure out who to call and how, what to say, you know, what's happening if you're working eight hours or six hours in a day, you know, it ought to, there, we will be able to identify and uh, you know, what, what, what's a good constructive amount of people to reach out to that most honors you leaves you in the most power is the most productive amount and helps keep you productive with your time. And then we can also see step by step in all these steps where the hole is. If we see, hey, they're working lots of hours, but they're not getting a lot of touches. They're not reaching out to a lot of people. Okay, that's the first thing we got to solve. Then if we see, cool, they're working the hours, plus they're, they're reaching out to the people, but the people aren't responding. Okay, now we know the next step we need to solve. Like something in their way they're reaching out isn't working. So we need to empower them. We need to look at what message are they sending? How are they sending it? What's the tone? What's the wording? How do we change this so that we can up that response rate so that we get the highest amount of response rate? If we have send out 10 messages, can we get seven, eight, nine, ten 10 responses versus one, two, or three? Right? So it's important. You're not tracking that just so I can be like, you're a bad boy. No, it's like, you're tracking that so I can see how to help you make a lot of money fast. It's for you. I mean, it's for me too, because when you make money, I make money. Right? Otherwise, I wouldn't even invest the time. I'd be like, figure it out. Right? <laughs> I figured it out. You fucking figure it out. But I'm setting aside time to train and account for you guys and assist you and guide you and support you because it's going to be a big, big ass win for all of us. You know what? I'd rather be having sex with my wife than holding you accountable, Thomas. I promise you. <laughs> Except that I love, I also want this to be a long-term sustainably successful, and that means you need to make money, and so do I. Awesome. So if you've, if you've done the hours, you've done the, the, the touches, but you're not getting the responses, cool. Or now you're getting the responses with maybe adjustments, but they're responding and then now we're tracking scheduled appointments. Well, if you're, you're getting them to respond well and those numbers are all good up to that point, great, we've got three of the seven steps covered or whatever it is. But if step number four, those conversations aren't converted, converting well to scheduled appointments, then we need to look at what's off. How are you handling and managing that conversation? What's your tone? What's your attitude? What wording are you using? How can we optimize and empower you around your tone, your wording, your structure, your timing, your presence, your space, your authority, your everything that it takes to convert those? I guarantee you I have 10 times the conversion rate than you do, but only because I've been in the game 10 times longer than you have. Right? Not that I'm more special, just I'm more experienced. 
So, but I can either send you to the wolves and say, good luck. Let me know how it goes. I hope you survive. We can do it Spartan style. Send out a little boy and say, well, if he survives, he was meant to. If not, he's a pussy. <laughs> right? Or, <laughs> or I can say, hey, let's empower you along the way and let me teach you everything I've been learning for the last 20 something years in the next two fucking months so you can be making the kind of money I made in all these decades in, in, a, in a matter of months. So we need to know how many, when they do reach back, when they do respond, you've reached out, you put in the hours, you've reached out, they've responded. How well are we converting those responses to scheduled appointments? So that we can know how to adjust that. Now the next step is Scheduled appointments, how many enrollment calls did we have? Now, there, here's some of the holes in this one. You may be scheduled appointments, but because you didn't set them up optimally in the beginning and make some clear agreements with them in the beginning, maybe they don't show up to the call. Like you had, Thomas, you had, did you have both of your chicks bell on you this week? No, nope, just Carolyn. Okay, so yeah. one of them didn't show. So that happens occasionally for me, and it, but it used to happen all the time. Now it almost never happens because I'm so damn clear and I've got so much authority and presence and I, I, I'm clear about the time zones. I'm clear about how important it is that they're there. I'm clear about honoring my time and showing up with authority and presence. I'm clear about not making them feel like I'm too available and that I'm, I'm too needy or any of that shit. And so just the tone and the attitude and the specific wording and the, the authority and all the energy I bring to it, very rarely does someone stand me up. And if they do, your wording back to Carolyn was a little too soft. Okay. She stood you up and you were still like super friendly, nice guy, like, which is good. I want you to be professional and nice, but I want you to be a little more firm. Like, okay, uh, if I'm going to set this time on Saturday and take this time on the weekend away from my family, are you going to, are you for sure going to be there this time? I know your day went to shit. I'm not sure what happened and I understand. I, I could, I've been there before and I just want to make sure that whatever time we schedule, you're for sure going to be there. Okay. So you want to give them a, a light version of a guilt trip, like a conscious guilt trip. Uh, not to the sense of trying, you don't want to sound like you're giving them a guilt trip. It needs to be so well disguised that they don't know it's a guilt trip. <laughs> but, okay. but, and it's more like less of a guilt trip. It's more like an account accounting. You're you're holding them accountable. It's not like okay, you left me stand, hanging, but hey, you still want to go on a date tomorrow, right? So you'll hear me talk dating scenarios over and over because it's the same shit. So were you ever were you good with the ladies before you settled down with this one? A little bit sometimes. Okay. <laughs> so. What we do know, what I do know is if, if a woman stood you up and you're like, if you're like, hey, let's go on a date, it's Friday. She's like, okay, and Friday she doesn't show up and then you message her, hey, uh, sorry, we missed each other today. You want to go out tomorrow? She's going to be like, you're such a needy little <laughs> <laughs> Right? Yeah. But if yeah. you were like, hey, where the hell were you? <laughs> Don't, do you have any idea who I am? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so uh, that's kind of you don't want to be a dick but you want to be clear hey I'm important I'm a big deal and my time is important and, and, and it's not still like very professional like hey very subtle and very professional it's like hey I want to make sure if I'm setting aside this time for you that this for sure works for you and you'll be able to be there it can be that subtle or something like that that's it's, it's, it's a calling out and they're like, yep, he definitely recognized I was not on, not there. And he's definitely calling me on my shit and he's being very tactful about it. So they're not, they don't take offense, but they also know you're not fucking around. Okay. And it's clear. It's clear that you're standing in your own power, not heroing them. Yes. If you, if you come into the conversation with hero energy, then you're going to get a victim in the conversation. Yes, yes, and yes. But when you move into your own power, it's, it's telling the truth. It's saying, hey, look, you agreed to show up and you didn't show up. Like, maybe don't say that, but that's the energy. When he's saying when he's saying a slight guilt trip, it's basically just reflecting back to them how they treated you 
and you build boundaries around that. So then when you get into the conversation, you're standing in your power and they're not showing up as a victim or on the drama triangle at all because you're not on there. Exactly. Well said. Awesome. Okay, so now um, if we track how many of these people show up to their calls, then we can look, okay, it, you know, if they're not showing up well, then we need to readdress how are you actually setting this up? Like uh, Thomas, I, Brandon, I didn't talk to you about it, but Brandon, eventually we will set it up so you guys have your own personal assistance. Once you guys get profitable, then you guys will set up your own personal assistants that will set your appointments for you so that all you're doing is, is having sales conversations. You're not dealing with scheduling or any of that shit. And when I set it up that way, that's how I outperform 20 other people on a sales team all put together. None of them have an, had an assistant. I did. And while they were dealing with missed appointments, scheduling their own shit, shifting gears a hundred times, going from sales call to appointment setting to whatever, I had um, I trained my assistant and improved and improved and improved her system until every objection before we even had them scheduled, I had her trained to handle every objection they could come up with. I'd be I'd have her say, "Okay, so are you the decision maker in the home?" It'd be like. Well, yeah. Okay, just to clarify, if you were driving home tonight and you decided, hey, I think I'm going to swing into the Lexus dealer and buy a $60,000 car, would you just do that without talking to your spouse? No, I'd have to include my spouse on that. All right, then we need to get your spouse on the call because at the end of this call, I don't want to hear your bitchy little ass saying, I need to talk to my spouse. <laughs> and then... You talk to your spouse That's and you don't know exactly what you taught your, what you taught your assistants to say, right? <laughs> yeah. Those exact <laughs> words. <laughs> and so, uh, so then, uh, so what, then what happens is they say, I need to talk to my spouse. You're like, are you fucking kidding me? I just spent an hour or two of my life for you to give me that excuse. Oh, how did I create this? I created this by not creating a clear agreement up front to fucking handle that shit. Right, so we we include in the scheduling script. Are you the decision maker in the home? Are you married? So the first question: Are you married or single? I'm married. Great. Are you the decision maker in the home? Yeah, I'm the decision maker. They almost always say they are, or sometimes they're like, "Well, we make our decisions together." If they say that, great. Let's get you both on the phone. They say, "No, I'll make my own fucking decisions," which most of them will say. You say, "Great." So if you know, give them an example, and then you'll see if they really make their decisions or if they're just trying to act like a badass. <laughs> so, so, all right. So, uh, you make your own. You make the decisions in the home. You're the decision maker in the family. So, if you were heading home tonight after work and you decided, decided, and I usually pick a dollar point that's similar to what I'd be selling them, right? So, if you're selling them a ten thousand dollar package or a twenty thousand dollar package. And you, here's the way you need to look at it. If it's $5,000 and uh, 5000 down and 1000 a month, and most of them are going to do 24 months, that's like a 24 months of 1000 or sorry, most of them are going to do 12 months at least. So 12 months times 1000 is 12000 plus your 5000 so that's seventeen grand. So I might say... You know, so on your way home from work tonight, and you just decide to swing by, make a fifteen to twenty thousand dollar purchase uh, of something that you wanted, you really wanted, maybe a motorcycle or some other shit. Would you make that decision without including your spouse? Would, could you just? Would, are you in a position and an agreement in your relationship that you could just st you just stop by and grab that without a, asking your spouse first? And if they're like, "Yep." And you can hear that they're solid in that. Be like, cool, let's get you scheduled. If they're like, well, I'd probably need to talk to my spouse about that. Great. And let's get you and your spouse on the call. When's a good time that would work for both of you? That way there's no objection at the end of the call after you spent two hours with their ass and then them, then them copping out because of that. So you want to you notice the patterns of what are all the excuses you run into and how can I counteract this in the, in the beginning, in the very, very beginning, before I ever get on the phone with them? 
this is how I outperform the 20 people is because I just mark down every damn excuse people would tell me. And then I'd think, huh, how can I word into my assistant script a pre, an upfront agreement that solves this problem before I ever get on the call? So that when I get on the call, I'm not getting on with an excuse maker, a pansy, uh, uh, someone that's not going to show up, whatever. So if they weren't showing up for the calls, I trained her. In the beginning, I was doing all this myself till I got profitable, then I trained her. So the same thing for you guys. Even before you train your assistant, you need to be applying this shit to yourself. So you need to mark down, what excuses am I running into? And it would be really wise for each, you to share those with each other so that it, you can both learn from each other's mistakes and each other's successes so you can move a lot more quickly. And no, this isn't a competition thing. We might set up some friendly competition shit just to help you guys perform better for yourself at some point. But there's, we're going to have plenty of leads neither of you are taking from each other. You're on the same damn team. There's plenty to go around. And you, if you show up as collaborative, then you get to support and empower each other to move much more quickly and effectively moving as a unit. I like it. Awesome. So, um, basically mark down every damn objection you come to at the end of every call, pay attention. How did I lose this and what could I do differently? That's where the other people are stupid. They just do the same shit over and over again and blame the person that was on the other end of the call. What I did, it was like, Hey, how could I have done this differently? I could be pissed at this person or I could address my system. If I'm pissed at the person, expect it to happen again. If I, if I address my system and take responsibility and see what I can shift about it, pretty soon my system becomes bulletproof. Make sense? Awesome. So, um, so I would, yep. so sometimes they might say, I need to check with my spouse. They might say, I need to see if, you know, whatever. So I had my assistant saying, making agreements up front, like, okay, if Christopher, if at the end of your call with Christopher, we discover, he, you, you discover that you're a fit. CRISPR requires that you're prepared to, to make a choice one way or the other. It's yes or it's no. He's not asking you to commit to say yes. He's just saying he doesn't operate in maybes. Would you be willing to agree? But at the end of that conversation, you're going you know, to discover whether you're a fit or not a fit. And if you discover whatever you discover, Christopher just wants a commitment from you that you're going to make a, a, a choice one way or the other at that time. Right? Because if they agree to that, if they say no, cool, well, I can't schedule you unless you agree to make a decision. It's not saying you're agreeing to do it. It's saying you will say yes or no at that time. That way, when we get to the end of the call, they don't say, uh, yeah, I need to think about this. Because when they say, yeah, I need to think about this, what they said is, I just wasted your two fucking hours because now I'm going to go home and mentally masturbate and all the voices in my head are going to go fucking crazy and I'm going to talk myself out of it and you're not going to get a sell. Even though you provided all the value and even though I need it, the voices in my head are my ego and they want me to stay small and stuck and they're going to talk me out of it. And there's no more powerful time then at the very end of that call, when you've taken them to heaven, you've taken them to heaven, you've taken them to hell, you've shown them the gap, you've got them to commit, and now you're showing them the solution, there's no better time to enroll them than right then. If you wait, you brought them 90% of the finish line, and then they sold you on not crossing the finish line. So the more you can alleviate their excuses at the end of the call in the initial appointment scheduling, the better. The more your time is going to be used effectively. And we'll know that by how many people showed up. So how many sales calls did I have? You might even want to mark, you know, we might even want to track on there. How many people, how many sales calls did I have scheduled for today? Yeah, Jonathan, let's add this. How many sales calls did I have scheduled for today? How many did I actually complete? And why? 
so that we can see what happened and be able to address that as we go. So then um, they show up and let's assume we've got all those previous steps handled. Um, if they show up to the calls, um, consist, you know, on time, every, you get them showing up and we got all that handled up to here. You're, you're perfecting the system. Now you get on the call and you have the sales call. Now we need to know how, you know, what's your conversion rate? If, did you have 10 calls and only convert one? Okay, that sucks. What's happening? What do we need to do to improve it? Did you have 10 calls and you enrolled five? Or you, know, you enrolled three? Oh, that's pretty good. What can we do to improve it? Had 10, you enrolled five? Hey, that's good. Love it. It's good odds. How can we improve it even more? You enrolled seven and a half out of 10? Fuck yeah, dude. You're in the top earners in the world. Top 1% of earners in the world making some serious bank. This is epic. How can we improve it even more? <laughs> so that's the, uh, yeah. <laughs> 10 for 10, you can't do 11 for 10, pussy. <laughs> Get your shit together. <laughs> So, uh, and then after that, collections, you know, how many, it's not a sell if you didn't collect. So really it's just like, what type of collection? Did you do a payment plan or did you collect all up front? If you did a payment plan, cool. If we see you doing like a ton of payment plans, then you're probably pansying out and jumping to the rescue too soon. Like when a person presents on stage, uh, 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 so say, I got up on stage and I presented really powerfully a topic and everyone was like, shit, I want this service. I, I definitely want him to offer, I want this. And I get up there, the a traditional model would be to say, similar products and services are offered at $10,000. I normally, on any other day except days that I present this, I normally charge $5,000. But you don't just jump to that. You're like, so I, I skip the step. It's like normally, so I might get on and I might write on the board. For the awesome fucking service and solution I just offered you, it's, you know, most people, it's often $10,000 is charged for this. And people go, 10000 Oh, I can't pay 10000 Shit, I really, really wanted this. But ten grand. I just don't know. Okay. Ah, is it worth that? I don't know. Their mind's going crazy. And I don't jump immediately to, don't worry, I'll give you a discount. I actually build up the value more. I'm like, now, remember, the value of doing this is this and this and this and this and this. So they're kind of like starting to talk themselves through the price point like, fuck, maybe I do need to find the money. Maybe I should do this. So they're starting to remember the value versus I'm, I'm, I'm shifting their mind from the, the cost to the value. Before I offer any discount, any payment plans, any, anything, I've quoted the 10,000. Their mind starts to freak out about that. Then I'm reinforcing the value long before I offer any other discounts or bonuses or anything else. So their mind can start to wrap around the possibility of paying $10,000. I hang out there as long as I can keep their interest and keep their mind engaged in the possibility of paying $10,000. Then I say, but normally I, for this service, like to charge a lesser amount because I know this is important to get out to people. I know it's something that you need and I want to help people with a lesser budget. So I normally charge 5,000 for this. And I want to remind you, I mean, shit, if you don't do this, your life's going to suck. You're going to die a miserable death. You're going to, you know, it's just teasing. But like, and if you do do this, you're going to be super happy and you're going to love it. You're going to feel so awesome. And it's going to solve this and this and this for you. You're going to be so glad you did it. And so now their brain, they're like 5,000, man, that still seems like a lot. Maybe I could do that. I almost had my mind wrapped around the 10,000. I could probably pull off the five. 
I don't know, yeah, he's right about that. Yeah, I really do want that. Yeah, that is important. And they're, they're starting, they're almost to buy at 5,000. I'm like, and today, the event only pricing. While you're here, the moment you walk out that door, this price goes away. I like to reward people that take action. I like to work with action takers because they get results. If you're in a, so I only want the action takers in the room. I don't want the people that need to mentally masturbate or screw around. I want the action takers. So if you act now, today, this price is only good right here, right now. I'm going to offer this right now for 2,500 bucks. And for the first 10 people to the back of the room, I'm going to throw in this thousand dollar bonus program at no charge for the first 10 people. Starting now. Whatever, right? I want to get the momentum because there's going to be early adopters and then there's going to be mid-level adopters and late adopters and then the momentum goes. But the point of all this is I build the value before I jump to, to saving them and I let them fester in their fear and overwhelm for a minute before I jump to, but no, 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 I could give you a discount. Right? So if we're at a farmer's market and you're like, how much for this butter? I'm like, 25 bucks. You're like, for a cube of butter? Well, uh, would 10 work? All right, I'll give you 10. Or I could be like, dude, this is the best fucking raw, organic, local, grass-fed, cultured, fucking best shit in the world that's going to make you skinnier, richer, smarter, sexier, faster, more energy, you know, feel amazing. Of course it's 25 bucks. They're like, okay. And I'll tell you what, if you give me 20, it's a deal. All right, here, here's 20 bucks, right? So I don't just jump to save them, like, because now I'm devaluing myself. You don't notice Apple jumping over themselves to offer discounts. Quite the opposite. Like, no, we don't fucking do sales. You don't like it? Go somewhere else. We offer the best. We don't do sales. You want to do business with the pros? Cool. Right? So we don't want to jump to, oh, 5,000 is hard. Uh, we have a payment plan. We want to hang out for a minute like, okay, 5,000. How are, you know, and if we notice they go quiet and we can tell they're scared, just be like, hey, I noticed you went quiet. Uh, what's happening for you over there? Oh, I just, I don't know how to do 5,000 or. I don't know, then you go to, let me remind you of the importance and what we've talked about. You are the one that told me early in the conversation that if you didn't get this shit handled, you were headed for a divorce. We also talked about that you are worth a half a million dollars and that if you do go through that divorce, you're going to pay out half of that to your ex, plus lose your kids, plus go through a lot of bullshit. So you can pay $250,000 later, or you can pay $5,000 now and actually resolve the problem. So let's talk about how, you know, what can you do? All right, I guess I could put it on a card. You damn right you can. What's the number, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? So a lot of your sales conversations, Christopher, and you're not this warrior. <laughs> 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 and you're right and I uh, I learned all these things and they're in my mind but I, I, I soften the blows by I still use the principle but I soften the blows by being very tactful in it. yeah and I want you guys to know I'm very tactful so I'm sounding warrior here because the typical salesperson the tendency you're gonna have is to be too soft you're, and, and if we don't overcome that, you're not going to thrive. So you need to have the ability to be hard if needed. Be tactful. I do have a soft brand in general. We, we deal with more conscious and, and soft people, and we don't want them to feel like we're a high-pressure, manipulative, raping, pillaging, viking sales team. <laughs> but... 
but you guys need to have the fucking ability to be assertive. Find a way to be tactful, professional, conscious, loving, supportive, but be very much assertive and dedicated to helping them move past their barriers. They have their defenses and their ego wants to keep them stuck like a mofo. And if you guys don't stand strongly enough and solidly enough for them, you're not going to make sales, you're not going to make money, and they're going to stay stuck, and it's going to be ugly for all of us. Okay, so, um, yeah, so if you jump too fast to that, that payment plan, then you're going to do a lot of payment plans. If I see a ton of payment plans, I'm going to know, hey, you're jumping too fast. Remember, focus on value. Move them through those hurdles. Don't just jump to that shit. Hold them in that space for a minute. Let them get uncomfortable. Let them wrap their brain around. It increases your odds of selling them too. Because if they're wrapping their brain around 5,000 and they're like, man, I don't know. I'm on the fence. I'm teetering. I just, I don't know how to do that. And blah, blah, blah. And you're, instead of jumping to the rescue and coming across as needy, then instead you're like, well, remember the importance and what we talked about, right? And you take them back to that stuff of why you decided it was so important. Thank you, baby. Let me realign you. Yes, exactly. What? Um, That's Megan, say hi. Megan, Jonathan says hi. Jonathan says hi. By the way, Brian Erickson said to give you a hug and a kiss the other day and so did someone else, I don't remember who. Oh, <laughs> Levi Darger. <laughs> And Brian Johnson said hi. <laughs> um, so um, reinforce the value, and it's in your own best interest because if you take time to reinforce the value before you jump to that, that payment plan, then they almost are like, man, I don't know how, but I for sure I'm three-quarters of the way there. I'm just right there. I just don't know how. You're like, would it be helpful? And this, write this down. This is a powerful question. Would it be helpful if I blank? Because when I ask that question, if you say, well, we do offer payment plans, then they're like, oh, okay, that's something you offer. Now they don't feel obligated, right? They feel like that's something you offer. But if you say, would it be helpful if I was able to arrange for you to be on a payment plan. Oh, that would be helpful. Boom, you just fucking close the cell. All because of a shift in your question. Because now, the, and, and they feel obligated at this point. They're like, I'm so grateful. I really appreciate you being willing to work with me on this. Like the whole fucking attitude changed because you said, would it be helpful versus, hey, uh, we offer payment plans. Right? Mm-hmm. So you, re, you reinforce the value, get them realigned to the cost they will pay if they don't make this investment. And this isn't a cost. This isn't a price. This is an investment in themselves with a rate of return on investment. They're going to get reap massive rewards as a result of doing this. So anytime they start to focus their mind on the price or the cost, you point it out. Look, on every transaction, there's a price and there's a cost and there's a value. Price is $5,000 down and $1,000 a month. The cost is if you don't do this, you're going to lose your marriage and have a shitty life and die unfulfilled with your song unsung. <laughs> and the value is if you do do this, you're going to be happy and fulfilled and prosperous and you're going to love your life. And there's no price that you can put on this. So what I want you to realize is this isn't a, a cost or an expense. This is an investment. Expenses are just expenses you have to pay and then you never get that back. An investment is something you pay into and it reaps rewards on an ongoing basis far greater than what you put into it. This is an investment. So you want them, you want to reinforce that in them. Then... You bring them to, you know, if they, they can't figure out the five, you say, would it be helpful if I offered you a payment plan? Yeah, that'd be helpful. I, I really appreciate that. All right. The way we do this, 
we can work it out. It's 2,500 down. And then we'll spread these out over this term. Can you make that work? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make that work. Great. Let me get your credit card information. We'll get all your information so we can get this set up. We'll get you rolling. You're going to be so happy that you did this. Add that in. You're going to be so happy because you're immediately shifting their mind from, oh, fuck, I'm making this payment to, oh, I'm going to be so happy I did this. <laughs> I've invested a little bit of time and money in learning some shit huh? <laughs> around this stuff. It makes all the difference in the world. Um, okay, so can you guys see the importance of tracking this stuff and how, because it's all a numbers game. We're just one plus one plus one, it's an equation. And we can see the weak point and adjust it. And so we can, and you can either suffer and beat your head against the wall because you guys would have never known this shit. You could have beat your head against the wall for fucking 100 years and not know this shit. Right? Which is another important thing is don't just wait to get this from me. Include in your day. So you need to be in a place of power. So every day, get up, work out, meditate, journal, study you know, drink a green smoothie, whatever you're going to do that gets you in the optimal place of power. Do a breathing session. Take time in between. If you start to get lethargic or tired or weighed down, take time, shift, recharge, realign, so that every time you're connecting, leave space in between your sales calls so you're not freaking out like, I need to end this one early to get on that one, and then you screw up the clothes after spending two hours on it, or... The next one, you screw it up because you started off late and now they're pissed off and now you have to spend trying to overcome that. And plus, you're too tired because you exhausted six hours straight of sprinting. Instead of doing a two-hour sprint, take a, take a half-hour break. Two-hour sprint, a half-hour break. Right? So set yourself up to win. Put, put fucking – see, before I come in my office, I have water. I have – smoothies i have supplements i have all this shit sitting here so that if i get caught up or whatever i'm still taken care of most of the time i'll walk out and go out in the sun and get a drink go downstairs get a snack do whatever in between things but sometimes i go over and then i'm back to back so i'm i got stuff here from the get-go to make sure i'm covered you must stay in a place of power if you're going to be on that phone be in a place of power otherwise you're just wasting your time one of the number one things that rules I want you to observe is certainty sells. Certainty sells. If you're not in impeccable integrity, you don't have certainty. If you're not loving yourself, you don't have certainty. If you're not passionate about our product and service and absolutely believe in it, you don't have certainty. If you're not in a place of power and believing in yourself and believing in life and, and believing in everything that you're up to, you're not going to have certainty. And if you don't have certainty, people don't buy from you because they don't trust you. And people only buy from people they trust. Have certainty. Your certainty needs to be bigger than their fear. Are you both super clear on the value and importance of the tracking? Cool. Yes. We'll do it on a daily basis so that I can guide you. I don't want you guys to beat your fucking head against a brick wall for a week. Why not let you do it for just a few hours and then connect in and support you, right? So if at the end of every call, while it's fresh on your mind, you right, right after that call, if you can, it, 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 as much as possible, get on in that voice recorder on our sales team thread so that you're each learning together, so I don't have to answer the same shit for both of you separately. Get on and share your experience so we're all learning together. All right? So just get on and say, okay, just finished a call. They showed up. It went well. I feel like I could have taken them deeper on the pain. Yet, step, I probably could have taken them higher on the, the paradise step. I probably didn't identify most, as clearly as possible on the gaps. I probably didn't, you know, make sure they were fully committed before I moved on. You know, I, I, I probably could have presented the solution better and 
I probably was too logical and not, you know, really appealing to their emotions enough. And I probably moved on to the discount way too soon. So those are the things I'm going to focus on improving from here. Uh, this or whatever, just see, share what you can see about what went right, what you can improve. And if you just do a 60 second clip, just like I had the call, this is what worked. This is what I think could be improved. This is, was the actual result. This is what I think could have happened. This is what I'm seeing. I'm wondering if you guys have any feedback. So that's 60 seconds and, and you could hop on your next call and ignore us. We could respond when we want. You get that feedback same day and you're, you're altering course a lot more quickly instead of getting way off course before you get back on course. So at the end of every call, while it's really fresh, you just send that quick voicemail. Then at the end of the day, at the end of every day, have it in your calendar, send the sales report. We'll log on to Wufu, fill out the form. Brrr, send it over so I can look at it and we can know what's happening in real time. Then once a week before these calls, weekly report. Um, yeah, let's look at a weekly report that's probably different than Wufu. It's probably actually like an Excel type spreadsheet that tracks, I think Jonathan already created it and Jonathan, we might get to edit it slightly, but bottom, it might need to reflect all this, the headings we created today. But at the end of the week, if we could look at those numbers and see a report card across the board, those other ones during the week are like in the moment, kind of by feeling in the flow or in the middle of the battlefield, adjusting as we go. At the end of the week, we can have that report to look. When we look at it all together, what patterns do we see on this report card? So that's, that's the importance of that Excel spreadsheet and that weekly check-in. So hey guys, do you want me to with your daily Wufu when you submit a daily Wufu, do you want me to email that to you? So then your weekly report, you can just look at your daily numbers and just plug it in. That'd be easy for you guys. If so, send me their best email to email these forms to when you fill them out. Brilliant. Thank you, Jonathan. So then, then I want to show up on these calls and I want to, so during the week, we'll deal with your voice recordings as we go along. We'll deal with your, your daily reports as we go along. At the end of the week, we'll pull up on these calls, those reports. So maybe that means you fill it out on drive and then I pull it up and look at it and then screen share with you and review it with you live. Yeah, I'll put I'll put a spreadsheet in their folders. Perfect. Any other questions, comments, requests from any of you? Yeah, are we focusing primarily on purge and ascension, or is there any other events that we're going into? So um so I'll jump in a little bit. We're going to have it there in your folders. You're going to have an offer sheet that will break down all the things that you can offer. So, um, so I, I don't know. I don't know what Christopher's going to say, but it's going to include everything that we offer essentially. So you can pull off of that. It's going to kind of have a hit sheet of like, Oh, this is ideal for this person, et cetera. Um, that's all I had. Awesome. Thank you, Jonathan. So, um, Yes, you'll have that sheet, and um, at the end of the call, I want you to be thinking what's going to best serve this person, and then I want you to also be thinking what's our next event in the lineup, and is that event what's going to best serve this person? Um, so one, we do want to fill the next event. The next event is the most important event to fill, right? If it's not already filled, then the most, the most closest event that we're coming to is the most important one to fill, but we don't want to send someone to one that's not going to rock their world, right? So if we can put them in the next one, let's do it. The sooner we can, the, from, the, from the moment we take their money, if I take, like right now, we're taking purge people's money and tell, telling them we'll see you in October. 
that's not the very best thing to do. I mean, it works, but if I could say, okay, see you in two months or a month, there's a lot less chance of them having counter commitments. You know, how many people are we going to have say, yep, I'm in for October. And then three, four, five, six months from now, they're like, Hey, I got in a car accident. Hey, I got cancer. Hey, my wife left me and I don't care anymore. Like whatever, <laughs> like the chances of them running into counter commitments between the longer the span, the more we're going to lose. We're going to have fall off. Um, but we do want to get them enrolled in what's going to best serve them. Now, with those particular lists that you're dealing with that are specific purge list people, we're just going to sell them the purge. We're, we're on the phone to sell them the purge. They said they're interested in the purge. They already said, pick me for the purge. We're not even offering them anything else. We're just offering the purge to them. And so this is going to vary per lead. What you want to know is the source of the leads. Like, hey, you know, right now we're working purge leads. After that, we're going to work a different type of lead. And you're going to want to understand not only like, what do we know about these individuals, but what do we know about these leads? Where'd they come from? What do we know? So you're going to want a description from me and or Jonathan about who are these leads and why are they here so that you know how to lead into that conversation. Then also, you know what to sell them. If they came from a relationship presentation I did with a joint venture deal, we're probably talking relationships, right? Um, and so we need to be aware of what lead source we're dealing with so we know what conversation we're having. Um, so there's several factors. It's like, where do the leads come from? What does this person most need? And maybe write these things down. What does this person most need? That's going to make the biggest impact in their life based on their biggest stress or pain point. Secondly, what's our, what's our, what's the most, what's the soonest event that we're offering that's going to best serve this person? Another thing is like, is this person a business owner or are they an employee? This is another key factor. And um, another one it would be like, what price point? Is this person someone that can invest 5,000 down and 1,000 a month? Or is this person a 5,000 down and 300 a month? And I'll explain that in a minute. Um, is this person, so if they're a mess, like there's so much of a mess that they're probably not going to thrive in Ascension, we probably ought to not sell them into Ascension. We probably ought to sell them into our online relationships program. That's more of a foundational piece first so that they can get their shit sorted before we add them into Ascension. So they're not, we're not bringing too fucked up of people. Not, I mean, that's kind of judgmental, but people that have too many issues to deal with, we don't want to necessarily bring them directly into Ascension because now we're not going to get the results that we want to get as fast as we want to get them. And it's going to affect the energy of the group because we're dealing with business in there. Right? So if they need more foundational stuff, let's give them more foundational stuff, which will be handled by a combination of like, let's get you to the purge, which will take you to the depths and give you the reset. And then let's add you to our online group coaching relationship program. That's only two ninety seven a month. And it's going to help you establish the foundation of how to relate with yourself, relate with life, relate with God, relate with your spouse, relate with your kids, relate with, the economy, all this other shit. So you'll have a fault, solid foundation later on. If you want to launch a business, we'll get you added into the Ascension group. Otherwise you'll be well taken care of in the ignite love group coaching program or whatever. Now I mentioned that I've told Thomas, I don't know if I've told and Jonathan, and I've talked about it to some degree. Ideally we want every one of our clients to get to the purge, right? That's the, that's the flagship program, but we also do get to weigh, you know, would we rather sell them and fulfill in the next two months or eight months, two months, if it works, if it's the optimal value for everybody. Right? So we want to weigh that pretty good. And then also we want a combination of an online program with a live event always. 
So the way I've divided it, and Jonathan, some of the things I'm going to say now, you and I haven't even talked about yet. Actually, Thomas is the only one in the know. Because a lot of this I was inspired on while I was talking to Thomas and training him last week or this week or whatever it was. <laughs> um, so uh, <sighs> so basically the way I was segmenting it with Thomas is you're going to be dealing, if you're dealing with an entrepreneur, if you're on the phone and you discover this person's an entrepreneur, they probably make six figures a year. They're, they're already established. Uh, or, or maybe we don't, this isn't our preference, but we would take on as a secondary client. So that's our ideal. Like they make six figures a year for the Ascension group. They already own an established business and they make six figures a year or more. That's probably our ideal general dude or person. They can be a man or woman for Ascension. Um, it's not a must, but that's just kind of what you're keeping in mind. Bottom line, they need to be able to afford 5,000 down and 1,000 a month without freaking the fuck out and going into fight or flight and then not performing and producing results, right? Then there's the non-entrepreneur if, if you're on the phone and you're asked, so some of your first questions need to be, are you a business owner or, or an employee? Okay, what are your goals and objectives with your income? And you're basically asking that, one, to know how to best help and support them and know that their pain points are around their health, their relationships, their finances, and their spirituality or purpose. So we want to have them connected with those. And so we want to ask questions around those things. We want to know what, what, how, that, how it is right now in those four areas and how they would like it to be in those four areas. No matter what you're enrolling them into, you want to know how their life is in those areas. Because everything that we're enrolling them in helps them in those areas. And it also connects them with their pain and their paradise so that you can emotionally motivate them to change and, and solve the problem instead of staying stuck. Okay, so. If they're an entrepreneur, we want them enrolled in Ascension and a live event. If they're a single per or they're a, an employee, we want them enrolled in the Ignite Love group, online group coaching, which we may get to change the name of that. I think we do get to change the name of it because it needs to not just be relationships. It needs to be something like it covers relationships, but it, it covers the personal power slash foundation slash thriving. It's basically our, our ascension for non-business owners. And, and there's not accountability in that because the price point in order to offer the, the level of service we offer in ascension, we cannot offer that for 297 doesn't work. We're having a hard time making the numbers work as it is. I think I've got a business idea, a structure lined out that'll allow it to work. Um, but we're still working on that. Um, so, but bottom line is it's like, and Jonathan, you and I, let's talk about the name of that program and structuring of that program. Right now it's just running. We only have a few members in it and it's running as a relationships program called Ignite Love Group. Love Group. Cool. Awesome. So, um, if they're an entrepreneur, Ascension, if they're not, a, if they're an employee, this is other one. And, and it's always a combo. We're always doing a combo package. It's, it's either the business owners in Ascension plus a live event or the non-business owners in kick ass in your life, the online group coaching program for non-business owners and a live event. 
So that's the first filter where we're th you're thinking through as salespeople is, is those things. Then the second filter would be, so the first is like, are they a business owner or not? Second's probably, what can they afford? Third's probably, what's going to best, well, second's probably, are they a business owner or not? Second, what's going to best serve them? Third, what can they afford? Fourth, what live event is going to best serve them as quick as possible? If they really need the purge and they, they can't afford to go to two or three of our live events in one year, they're going to pull off one barely. And it would serve them to go to all the other events, but the purge is really the one that's going to serve them. Send them to the purge. We're not going to go for money. We're going to go for service. If they're a person who has plenty of money, they could easily attend three events this year and all of them are going to serve, cool, send them to the very next event. Um, Do you want to talk about that back, the back end of the purge at all? No, yeah. no. So that won't affect the salespeople ever, and um, the people. I don't want them to know anything about it till we get there. Um. Okay. So. But you guys as the salespeople are always selling a package deal. It's always a live event with an online group coaching program. We don't do them separately anymore. Now, Jonathan, I've, one of the things I was thinking while I was on with Thomas <clears throat> to make that a killer bonus to, to really incentivize quick action and it kind of scares me because it's a big stretch, but I'm thinking about doing it. So one, let's talk about the, the, the non-business owners program, online program. So we say, look, here's the deal. So say Thomas or Brandon was on with them. They're like, here's the deal. After our conversation, I've put together a recommendation. We know we have a lot of offerings and a lot of solutions to some really key problems. And we don't just try to sell people random shit like one size fits all. Instead, we gain clarity on who you are, where you are, and what's going to best serve you. And based on our conversation, you said that your marriage was really on the rocks and this could cost you so much in emotionally, mentally, financially, in all ways. I really think getting your relationship solved is the number one thing. After that, we could deal with really blowing up your business. But my recommendation based on our conversation would be to enroll in this program that's really about relationships and about this personal power and, and getting yourself solid and thriving. Then later on, we can handle the business side of things and get you over into Ascension. But right now, I think the two best things for you would be to come, go to our upcoming relationships event in March that's going to give you that deep powerful live in-person experiential transformation like fresh start reignition and clarity and a whole new set of tools to move forward in a powerful way plus i don't want you wait until mid-march this is important so we're going to get you going in our online group coaching program called kick ass and in your life blah 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 whatever the name is and get you rolling in that right now. That's a group where we meet every single week and you have certain activities and things that are really empowering and then you're working with the coaches to move forward so that we can get you moving forward right now in the best way possible and then in a couple months, we'll go on that deep dive. Now, normally, you know, and then you might ask them, how's that sound to you? Does that sound like exactly what you're needing? Yeah, it totally does, perfect. Now, normally, uh, we charge, you know, X amount for this event and X amount for this group. We offer a fast, you know, for if you, for, if you make a decision 
this or not if you make a decision because that's leaving it too much it, it's more like for acting what you know for taking action while you're on the call yeah. we're offering a we offer a promotion that you will save you know rather than paying you know x amount down and then x amount so like with the with the non-business owners program say we're selling them the purge for five thousand plus the online group coaching program then we would say okay the purge is five grand and this online group coaching program is three nine two ninety seven a month what we're doing for for what i could do for you today is as long as you act in, in, in let's see i don't know the exact wording so we get to refine this but basically like as long as you act now while we're on this call together i can also throw in for you two tickets to our ignite love relationships workshop coming in march and the tickets are valued at 997 a piece if you act right now before we get off this call i've been authorized to throw in two tickets to this event worth nearly 2000 bucks so something along those lines so jonathan let's discuss that separately after this sometime soon uh, to make sure we're on the right track and then brandon and and thomas just kind of check back with us in the next early next week to see where we're at with it then if we were dealing with ascension and the purge you would say okay here's the deal purge is five grand and uh ascension is five thousand down and a thousand a month so Normal rates would be ten thousand down, and then a thousand a month to get this handled. Uh, if you act now, and you might build the value first before you offer this. If you act now, before we get off this call. So, Jonathan, here's where I was. I was scared and considering offering. I was considering making it such a no-brainer that they can't say no. Basically, like if you act right now, you're gonna get both for the price of one. And I'm not sure about that because it's it's like it cuts my margins on ascension, it cuts my margins on the purge, but it may be good in the beginning to roll that out that way to gain more momentum and make it easier to sell. Um, or what I have sold already has been, uh, it's normally 5,000 for the purge, 5,000 for Ascension. And if you, uh, with the package deal, we're giving you a $2,500 discount. So it's only 7,500 up front plus a thousand dollars a month. I've already sold that one. So I know that one works, but I'm considering going even deeper into the no brainer act now fast action bonus especially with these newer sales people but i don't know we might do that temporarily and then raise it as demand raises and we fill the events way further in advance what do you think jonathan you want to talk about that later or do you have any feedback right now uh, at the moment i would i would keep it the way it is and let's talk about it later Okay, will you put some thought in it and then? I mean, are you giving them the choice to just do the event? So you're telling them to sell as a package, but can people choose to just do the event and not do Ascension? Can we not let them choose that? Maybe we ought to let them choose that. Um, yeah, we probably ought to let them choose it. So if you just do the event, it's five grand. If you just do Ascension, it's five. So you might sell it like this, guys. Like based on our conversation and what you're needing, you say you're wanting to build your business, but you keep self-sabotaging. 
you've been re reading and hearing about this stuff, removing your limiting blocks and stories and beliefs. And so you've been interested in the purge rather than waiting till October to go to the purge. My recommendation is to get going. You're a business owner, get going in the, in our, our Ascension group, which is a really powerful mastermind online mastermind group coaching training experience is seriously loaded with everything you need to be successful in all aspects of life and truly have it all uh, it's freaking epic people kick ass the results are amazing you can you know my suggestion is enroll in that now and then in october we'll handle the purge and that's going to really take a, give you a total reset so we get you rolling now kicking ass boosting thriving everything then we're going to clear all that shit out so then you're going to skyrocket even further now here's how the pricing works it's five thousand dollars for for ascension it's five thousand down then a thousand a month for the purge it's five thousand down or it's just five thousand bucks but if you choose to uh buy this as a package deal and you choose to do that while we're on the call then we're going to give you $2,500 off, making it so rather than paying 10 grand down, you're only going to pay, pay 7,500 bucks. Now, if you want this tomorrow, you want to come back and you want to think about it, you want to talk to your spouse, you want to whatever, it's going to be 10 grand. After we get off this call, it's 10 grand for the two. If, if you make the decision and commit to go all in on yourself and take on your life and create what you really want and make this investment in yourself and claim your worth, and make this commitment to making 2016 your year, then I'm prepared to offer you that $2,500 discount right now. Like, okay, let's, let's just do that. Boom, okay, uh, and what I need to do is just get your information. Boom, take them over to the Wufu form. Now, which credit card do you wanna put this on? Visa or MasterCard? Okay, what's the address associated with that card? Great. And you don't fucking stumble on your words. When it comes to collecting the money and gathering that data, do not be timid. Do not let your voice crack. Do not stumble. Don't act weak. Don't act uncertain. You want to scare them and have them withdraw? Let your voice be weak. You just, you just, you, you do not stutter. You don't delay. You don't, whatever. You're just like, okay, Visa or MasterCard. Visa, great. What's the card number? Or what's the, what's the number on the card? Okay, got it. And the CVC code? Got it. And what's the billing address associated with that card? Awesome, got it. Thank you. Just to clarify, you said blah, 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 blah. Yep, perfect. Best email address? Is your home address the same as the one on the billing for the card? Yes, no? Okay. Great, love it. Uh, just so we're clear, I'm going to hand this over to our processing, our lady in charge of processing. Uh, she's going to clear, you know, she's going to draw 7500 now, and then you're going to have payments of 1000 a month starting in 30 days from now on automatic. Perfect. Agreed. Love it. Awesome. Congratulations. You're going to absolutely love this. I'll notify Christopher that I've approved you, that we had our interview, and that you've been approved. Uh, congratulations. You're going to be so glad you did this. Buckle up your seatbelt because this, you know, this ride's about to get crazy. And then complete the call, say goodbye, wish him good luck, tell him, hey, feel free to reach out anytime if you need anything, uh, if you have any questions. In the meantime, what you can expect is um, I'll contact Christopher and the team and they will be reaching out to you to get you all the logistics and details of the next steps moving forward. They'll get you added to the forums. Uh, they'll send you out some resources um, and confirm everything that we've discussed. Awesome, great, have an amazing day. Keep me posted. Then get in your comments and type in while it's fresh on your mind, type in all your comments to Eliza. Don't wait till later because pretty soon all the conversations blend in together. Right while it's fresh, type in everything you can recall that could be relevant about that person. Like what are their goals? What are their dreams? What are they wanting to accomplish? Why are they coming? 
you might have even while you were talking to them it would actually be a good idea to be typing that into that comment section while you're talking or maybe you you type those notes in a separate place that's not in that form so that it's actually coming to me and the team rather than Eliza um, but you Jonathan let's think through that from a process perspective I just don't, um, I guess my first thought would be I don't like typing when I'm talking to somebody definitely after yes but when I'm talking to someone I like handwriting stuff uh, I it helps me stay looped in better okay and I, I think when I do when I have typed in the past people can hear it and then they, they close off mm -hmm. they, Agreed. So don't, so you being in flow and connected with that person is way more important than taking notes. If you can't write the notes and stay present with them, don't do it. If you can take a note here and there, so I take killer notes while I'm talking. I don't make long sentences. I make one to two word bullet points because later on I use that to close the cell at the end. If they start giving me any shit, I have everything listed that they want and that they don't want in bullet points that I can bring right back to their face at any given moment because if I don't keep those bullet points, I don't know what to reference back to. I miss most of them. And when they hear me, they're like, holy shit, this dude remembers everything I said I wanted and everything I said I didn't want and everything that sucks. They feel deeply connected like I actually heard them and I understand them. Like it makes a big ass difference. So at the very least, like I'll have, I like to even just have a post-it pad with my little pen and I'll just write one bullet point at a time. He, you know, he feels like failure as a father. Failure as father. Like shortest, shorthand, fast, quick note, and then back to the conversation. Yep. And then if you can capture that shit and enter it into, oh, so the best place for that's going to be on the CRM. That's what I used to do when I was on the sales floor is on, under their name in the active campaigns, customer yep. relations management, you put notes under their name and you type in or later on uh, when you're done with the call, you report to Eliza. And then you type in all the shit you wrote down on that sticky pad so that anyone that looks at that in the future knows exactly what to talk to him about. Or if we want to launch an email campaign to him later, we could send him a message, say, hey, dude, you know, we could look through his notes and say, this dude was really hurting around his relationships. We could say, hey, Tom, are you still interested in creating, you know, turning your relationship around? And, and he, he's like, oh, these guys remember me, right? Um, so yeah, typing. Super easy to do on active campaign once we get yes. that set up. Awesome. So type in those notes after your call into that, the notes section on that lead on active campaign. Then in the notes section where you're making the cell, you're typing into Eliza the terms of the cell. Like they did a combo package. This is the offer. This is the payment plan. They paid up front. They whatever. You're clarifying all of that so that Eliza doesn't, if, if Eliza doesn't have to ask you questions, awesome. Save all this shit. So the more clear you can be to make sure that everything she has, she needs, she has, let's make sure the form's set up that way. So in the beginning, if we don't have the form set up that way and she's asking you questions, learn from that, adjust so that event, uh, as soon as possible, she don't have to ask you for anything ever. It's just... <laughs> Any questions? I had a question concerning... Um, and this might be a conversation we have off the, you know, at a different point in time, but your shift, I, I noticed you're shifting to, if you make a decision while we're on this call, so you're shifting to Kevin Nation's strategy, um, where we had discussed that and you were in, I know that kind of with people like, um, well, for example, people like Ryan, he's more of an Oracle. That's not going to really, So I'm just wondering if, if, is it, do you really want them to put, put like, say, okay, if we're on this call, fast act, like I lo we love working with action takers, you know, because if we do do that, generally what Kevin nation, what they do is give till the end of the day. 
Um, it's a great question. I don't know the answer. Like Ryan is actually becoming one of my favorite clients. Like dude's fully engaged. And that guy has seriously investigated me for a week. And I knew I'm going to, what's I think, that? I think like three weeks. Yeah, probably. And if I would have pushed him that day, there's no way he would have sold. Yeah. And I know the rest, a lot of the rest of the coaching market does the high pressure that day. Um, so I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering if that's really what we want to do. I, almost like if we're going to offer this special, you know, we so can. So what if we just offer the special and then we instead offer a bonus on top of it? We say, here's the special. So we, so say they're buying Ascension and Purge. Price of the Purge, 5000 Price of Ascension, 5000 down, 1000 a month. If you do both of them together, we give them a $2,500 discount. So then it's only $7,500. So that's epic. So I really recommend you do that. It's best for you anyway. And if you make a decision today, we're going to throw in a ticket to the 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 two day or three day relationships workshop worth a thousand bucks so we might consider something like that 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 feels yeah positioning it as a bonus i think feels better so it's not like you have them cornered you're offering a bone you're offering a discount you're offering a bonus it gives them a nudge without them feeling cornered yeah so so, so even if it's not that event that we're offering let's just think of a, a discount bonus combo i'll come up with something we'll figure it out awesome yeah that feels that feels in line with me. i like it. yes 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 thank you i really appreciate you uh the clarity we gained on that pricing today on all all levels thank you jonathan yeah. okay any other questions comments requests Your your head swimming yet? A little bit. It's all good though. <laughs> awesome, Brandon. How you doing? Hey, can you hear me? Yep. I'm trying to figure out how this phone thing works, but yeah, I'm good. Awesome. I'm hearing everything loud and clear. Sweet. So, Brandon, just so you know, you know, Thomas and I went over the numbers. If we get you guys kicking ass fully and you implement the system, I'll teach and train you guys. If we implement the system that I implemented on that sales floor and you guys master what you're doing and seriously get this down, you'll both be making about a half a million dollars a year. Like, no fucking joke. Forty. 40 grand plus a month, part-time. You work like six hours a day and bring in 40 grand a month. So like, this is no joke. Um, we set up residual incomes and all kinds of shit. Brandon, you and I haven't talked terms yet, um, but we're offering 5% residuals on the back end of things and all kinds of shit. So this is a, fucking priceless opportunity i don't know anyone that any sales floor anywhere that's offering the generosity that we're offering so we're going to demand a lot we're going to expect excellence we're going to train and empower you we're going to share everything we've learned along the way the other good news is as you guys master these skills that i'm teaching you you will never be hungry again ever no matter what the economy does. Like you could drop me off right now in any country in the world with no wallet, no ID, no money, no nothing. And I, I would look around and go, okay, what's needed around here? Who has a problem that I can solve? I go get in dialogue and conversation. I'd have total confidence to have those conversations. I'd start swinging some deals. By the end of the first day, I'd have a place to live. I'd have food. By the end of the first week, I'd have some fucking business still swinging. I'd have some cash flowing through. In a month, I'd be thriving like, oh, yeah. A year later, I'd be a millionaire. 
And you guys have the blessing and the gift and the opportunity to have that same ability. So yes, we demand excellence. We're training you to be fucking Brandon Bourne. The Bourne identity of, of, of your life. So take it, take it, appreciate it, be present with it, devote yourself, be committed. And it's not all fucking roses either. Thomas, you and I went over this. You're going to hit counter commitments and you're going to have judgments and stories and fears and resistance and counter commitments and stresses and whatever. Part of the journey. Be tough enough to deal with it. Be committed enough to deal with it and overcome it, but communicate clearly as well so that it, it can be as smooth and flowing and quick as possible. We're here to support you. Thank you guys. Good stuff. Just so you know, we're as much as possible. We want to keep these calls as short as possible. This is way longer than we anticipated, but we covered some brilliant stuff that will massively empower you. So, Thank you very much, Christopher. It was awesome. Awesome. Hell yeah. yeah. Create an amazing rest of the day, guys. Rock and roll. Talk soon. Have a good day. You too.